Good morning and welcome to 23 Degrees Sideways, Coyote in the Highlands. I want to talk a little bit about sprinting. Um, this is one of those body mechanic things. You know, someone, someone brought up recently a, a little meme about how the caveman ate all organic food and had clean air and clean water and, and perfect life and died at the age of 35, which is, of course, completely wrong. Um, if you made it to age 15, it's likely that you were going to die somewhere after the age of 70. We don't know exactly what the real metric is because we look at the the bone damage and the bone density and and the wear and the tear on the skeleton and we assume that it's similar to people who are raised on grains, basically slave food. And we know from modern context with orthopedic surgeons that you can have the bones of a 35 year old at the age of 20 if your nutrition and your exercise aren't right. And this is actually a lot of Westerners at this point. There's a lot of people in the world. It's not just Westerners. This is kind of a global phenomenon. And it increases as the sedentarism and the processed food increases. So we know that this is a thing. And it looks like if you made it through childhood as a quote-unquote caveman, you were probably going to live to what we think, looking at bones in a modern context, was an average age of around 70, but is probably closer to, again, that 90 or even 100, just looking at how bones work differently or how they wear differently in different environments. So it's a very interesting thing. And the key to this seems to be one of the keys to this seems to be sprinting, different kind of exercise. Um, you know, the, the long-lived um, caveman, quote-unquote caveman, hunter-gatherer, was not long-lived because he went on a treadmill for two hours, three days a week. That's, that's not actually how that worked, or long distance running as a regular thing. It, it actually wasn't. There was periods of high intensity exercise. We do have the ability to outlast most animals in terms of long distance running and such. We can be persistence hunters very successfully. We have the ability, but that's not something that we do all day every day. That's, again, one of those myths that... that um, you know, the, the search for food, the, the, the constant running and hunting was just con continuous and it was a horrible, stressful thing. And I think we relaxed a lot. I actually think we relaxed way more than people want to acknowledge. So, persistence hunting cardio is actually a good thing in limited amounts. But it's not something you, that you really train for so much as it is something that you have an ability to do. If you want to train you want to do sprints. Now, what does this have to do with my channel is that this has certain effects on your mental, your neurochemistry, your mental state, your mind, and your brain. And it's really awesome, and it's really good, and it's especially good for your mood. Let's just say, set it down with mood. Okay, but your neurochemistry, how your neurochemistry affects your mood. So if you get, you know, we've had people who get frustrated and they go work out to get rid of the anger and burn it off. And that actually works. Okay, that's actually, that's a thing. You need to release the anger and do all the mental stuff as well. But in a physiological context, sprints elevate your mood. Sprints elevate your neurochemistry. They, they, they elevate all the little brain chemicals that make you feel good and happy. Also tired, which is, which is good. We have a lot of sleep problems right now. And I think that th that doesn't mean you want to do a set of 100 <clears throat> lightweight deadlifts right before bed. You want to do that a couple hours before. And... In fact, in fact, a lot of this behavior works better if you're not overly stuffed in terms of food, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, food, food is religion for a lot of people, and there's a lot of stuff that, that you can't really talk about a whole lot. 
I'll be getting into those rants later on once I have enough followers to lose a couple <laughs> subscribers. And thank you, thank you, thank you. As I woke up this morning, I realized I had 62 subscribers, which is a far cry from 28 a couple months ago, so I'm doing really well um, as far as that goes. Very small channel, there's no or advertised growth, it's all very organic, and I really am appreciating every one of you who subscribes and those of you who actually watch any videos. I'm still getting less than a dozen views on all of my videos, but those of you who are watching, I really do appreciate you. Please comment, like, share, subscribe, share especially. Uh, likes would be good too, that would actually help me know, but comment. You know, take me to task, that's fine. I will try to respond with grace and remind myself that I am talking to a human being and not a computer screen, you know. So sprints have a lot to do with your, with your mood. And what a sprint is, a sprint is not necessarily the right word. If you are involved in any kind of running, sprinting is a really good way to look at this. 100 yard, 50 yard, your health level is, is going to make a huge difference on this. 200 yard, you know, um, the 400 meter sprint is really a, a cool ideal maximum in terms of, of where your energy is going gonna, is gonna to lie, and I think that's great. One of the ways to do this, to integrate this into your morning walks or your evening walks or just walking in general, is to go ahead and sprint a distance and then just walk. Walk until you feel, you know, decent and then sprint again. And that can be, if you're in really good shape, that can be a lot of sprints um, with very short recovery time. That's up to you. Don't overdo it. Um, you don't want to turn it into a cardio thing. You want an all-out sprint. You know, for most of us, 50 or 100 yards is going to be more than adequate to get the, uh, the heart rate up. Kettlebell swings with an appropriate size kettlebell are also a really good way to do that. 100 swings for an average decent shape, an average good condition adult male with a 16 kilogram kettlebell will definitely get act as a as a sort of sprint um for females 12 kilograms tends to be the the weight but now in america people using kettlebells seem to work on these 8 10 15 pound things and that's 12 kilograms is like 25 pounds that's like your minimum starting weight for kettlebells for a lot of for a lot of kettlebell centric um exercises you know if you need to get an eight kilogram just to get the back muscles involved because you're really sedentary then i understand that but 16 kilograms for men 12 kilograms for for women just seems to be a good starting weight to just handle being able to to do the the basic moves the swings and the snatch swing snatch swing snatch uh, Hindu squats, which is a body weight squat where you go all the way down, butt to ankles, and you, you, you lift your arms on the way up. It's kind of a full body exercise. That's a really good one to integrate with kettlebell swings. If you have very limited access to materials, time, space, then kettlebell swings and Hindu squats in a brutal minimalist. This, was a, this is a workout that I love and hate at the same time. You start with 50 swings, 10 Hindu squats, and then you do that, you rest for 30 seconds, you do 40 swings, 20 Hindu squats, 30 swings, 30 Hindu squats, 20 swings, 40 Hindu squats, 10 swings, 50 Hindu squats, and you are blasted. That's an absolute sprint, and it's less than a 10 minute workout, and you are, you're pretty much done. That's a really good way to look at it. You, you need to pay attention to the body's basic functions, hinge, hinging is bending at the, at the, the waist, the hip, the using your hips, um, twist, torsion, you know, um, press, pull, big press, big pull. We've got really large shoulder musculature for that. Squat and gait, the movement, the movement of walking or running. You know, try to, try to integrate sprints into all of these movements. The point being that you're looking at doing an elevated heart rate for a short period of time. And short doesn't mean 30 seconds, although it can. It can be 45 seconds, one minute, two minutes, especially in the beginning. If you can get that up to a point where you where you can give an all-out effort for three to five minutes and just, oh, and then relax, 
that's great. You know, doing that once or twice or as maybe five times a day when you need to, that's actually a really good thing. And it's going to have huge effects on your blood, well, your blood chemistry, but your neurochemistry, your neurotransmitters and your, your brain chemistry. And that will actually cure, cure, mitigate a lot of um, physiological causes of depression or stress or anxiety, the, the, the actual physical causes in a way that will astound you. You don't need to fuel up for this or do anything special. In fact, um, the purer your diet, the less you'll spend on supplements and stuff. So there's that. It just gets you a, it gets you a space. It gets your body. Remember, brain is part of the body. It gets your body into a relaxed state. It really does. You get pumped up and then you relax. So do that. Try to work that into your life. You know, it's another thing to add to your list. Stay sideways.